Well, welcome to Cameron University's CETUS podcast uh, studio, and we're so appreciative to be in connected with the Oklahoma Sports Network and Cameron University, our great relationship. That is where our offices are found, and welcome into episode number seven, and I told you last time around, I was uh, getting on to myself that summer vacation kind of took over my priorities and it's supposed to be a weekly podcast and here and below things got caught up and I hadn't done it in a couple of weeks. So last week was my first uh, return back to podcasting and uh, we're going to continue on that with a week, uh, a weekly podcast to kind of bring you up sports related items here in the Oklahoma area. And of course, on the Oklahoma sports network, first and foremost, if you're not familiar with how easy easy we are. I was, I was really surprised that someone that I knew for a while knew uh, that we existed and uh, they were talking about how they were having to go uh, to uh, a safari search on their phone and, uh, and just try to find uh, our schools and our games. And I said, well, it's a lot easier than that. I did not know. And I'm, I'm trying to advertise this as much as possible that we are app friendly, meaning we are an Apple and Android devices. It is so easy to just search in your in your store, you go to the Apple Store, you search the Oklahoma Sports Network. It's free to download and free to watch, and the ease of it. This is what's so great about it. Now that we've got twelve schools in the network, we just added Jones, and uh, so we're still growing in that capacity of having more channels and, and more schools. And so when you're out and about, and we know that uh, that is a reality on Friday nights, you can watch one game and you don't have to click out and try to find somewhere to go. You just go right down the line. So if you're in a certain school district and you want to know about someone else, you just click on it. So please do that first and foremost. Also, if in your home devices, this is another thing that I can't just assume everybody knows. It's Roku, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV. So if you have any of those, you can same thing. Download it on a free search. It's there. And then you can have all the access because you don't have to go to each school's channel. Every live broadcast is posted up live now. And so you can kind of jump around at ease. And we're also on Facebook. We're on YouTube. We're on Instagram. We're on X. So that's how you can find us. So uh, first things first, my little shopping method of of getting the word out of how easily accessible that we are uh, to get the content that we have. So Let's bring in our special uh, guest today, uh, congratulating uh, Tanner Thompson, uh, the new head football coach of the Cash Bulldogs. And Cash has been a school that's been in the network uh, for a while now. And so uh, you take over the helm. And uh, how excited were you in that that short process? Because we had spring ball. We got that finished. And I'm kind of glad they had that in place uh, when there was a movement made. Uh, you were able to step in. Now you were on staff. But uh, tell talk about how how that where that process went as far as you being selected. Oh, yeah. You know, when when Coach Griffin kind of let us know that he was going to go to Walters, you know, it kind of happened pretty quick um, with the interview process and then uh, the hiring. You know, that it's just, just, you know, uh, humbling and it's extremely honored for this uh, this opportunity and uh, excited and can't wait to get to work. Well, I know it would probably excite you the most, and and you and I talked a little bit about this before we started the podcast, is your connection to Cash, okay? So you're not just on the coaching staff and you kind of knew that this was an opportunity. You're also an alum. You're a graduate. And I had the opportunity to talk to uh, Mike Dunn, who was uh, the head coach at Carl Albert. He was an alum and came back, and he was the first coach uh, from an alum coach to be able to win a state championship. And I said, how special is that? I mean, and, you know, he he took that, you know, a little emotional on the side to say he knew how special that was because it's not just, yeah, coaching to that level and getting to that uh, that pinnacle, but also to know that it's connected back. And so I really say hats off to you that, you know, you, you graduate from a school, uh, you, you go out in life and then you come back and then there's an opportunity. So I'm going to ask you the same thing. What is it like, not just a coach at the head football coach of the cash bulldogs, knowing that you were once a former bulldog. Oh, you know, when I, you know, when I came back to cash, I wanted to try to help elevate, uh, this program and in, in every aspect, uh, to the next level. And I think we've done that and, uh, with coach Griffin. And I think we're, uh, I'm excited for my vision and, kind of where I want to go with our program and continue to elevate. Well, there's a lot to talk about, you know, as far as the X's and O's, and we'll get to that. But I, I want to stay on the personal level just a little bit to introduce yourself. Uh, so uh, let's let's say you graduated from Cash uh, High School and then take us from there what you did and what you, what you did from that point. 
Yeah, so I graduated from Cash in 2011. After that, I went to uh, Swasu or South Southwestern Oklahoma State University in Weatherford, where I played football. And uh, uh, after that, uh, graduated from there. And then uh, I went to Weatherford. I worked at Weatherford for one year under Coach Woody Roof, uh, Hall of Fame coach in Oklahoma. And then, uh, you know, I got a coach from our old athletic director. Uh, I got a call from him, uh, Coach Nunley, you know, wanted, to, wanted me to come back and coach. And at the time, my dad was a basketball coach, and I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to, you know, come back home. And then uh, especially working with him in basketball and being able to coach my dad, that was pretty special. So, uh, yeah, and, and, and that's, you know, a, a coaching family that goes in, in with that. And we talk about, you know, all the accolades that your, your dad was able to uh, accomplish as well. And, uh, so I, I guess you, you got married and kids, let's talk a little bit about that. I do. I, uh, married five years now with my wife, Kiana, we have a, a one-year-old, uh, who, who never stops and, uh, Luca <laughs> and we're, we're, we're expecting another little boy in December. So it's oh, congratulations. Fun. Thank you. Uh, any time. particular date? Because I was born in December. December 19th. Me too. Okay, mine's the 13th. So hopefully we'll have an early delivery and you can uh -huh. put it as a birthday gift. So I, yeah. I, I like that. So a December baby and, and a one-year-old boy, that that makes life uh, uh, very hopping and happening, I guess hey, I would say. Hey, never a dull moment. Never now, you also told me that, uh, you know, and I, I said, I asked you ahead of time if, if this is okay to say that, because, you know, we're trying to get our summer months in before, you know, okay, school's going to start back up second week of August. You're going to make a little uh, surprise, little flight out west. Talk a little bit about what that's all about. Yeah, you know, my sister uh, and her husband live in the Fresno area. They both went to, uh, her husband played football at Fresno and she played basketball and they end up planting roots there after they got married and uh they had triplets and uh their first birthday is coming up and i'm gonna go out there and surprise them this weekend and get to see the, my uh, nieces and nephews for the first time that's so cool triplets uh all one is it all girls boys a mixture what uh, is it two boys and one girl Two boys and one girl. Wow. I tell you what, that, and you thought your life was upside down, uh, you know, okay. They, they've had a year of it. So maybe they can give a little advice right. on having a one-year-old and a newborn there. So uh, that's good. That's great stuff. Um, let's talk a little bit about your college experience there playing football and how that helps you coach now here at the high school level, having that. Uh, what did you gain from having, like you said, a, a uh, an experience there and then coaching there at Weatherford too? What did you take away from that that gets you to this position? Oh, you know, when you get to college, it's just a lot tougher. Uh, it, it goes from, you know, high school football, it's just, just so much fun and uh, you get to have just, so many memories with your teammates and once you get to college it turns them more to a job aspect and uh um you know you're competing against uh, everybody's best player in high school and so uh for me the road to get to me being successful in college was uh hard you know a, a lot of times i went from being a really good high school player to where in college i wouldn't get to play as much early on and you know i had to i had to find a way to separate myself and uh, find a way to uh, you know, to earn a spot, you know, and not make excuses for why I wasn't getting the chance early on. And, uh, you know, I kept just kept working and kept finding a way to to get it done. I think that just uh, that relates to life. You know, you, you, it's never going to be an easy path. You just got to keep finding a way to be positive, find a way to separate yourself and better yourself. And, and eventually you're going to get that chance and uh, you'll be successful. Well, Tanner Thompson, our guest uh, on the Point After podcast uh, for this week. And, you know, let's talk about your dad's influence, uh, being raised with that, and then actually uh, coming back, and especially when you mentioned basketball, being able to coach with that. What did you take from him that you could gain that helps you in this position? You know, my dad was uh, – growing up, he was he was pretty tough on us, you know, in the way uh, – wanting us – to compete at a certain level and, uh, you know, wanting us to be develop our skills and not being satisfied. And, you know, at times growing up, I didn't understand that and I would get a little frustrated. Um, but now I just, I'm so thankful, you know, I, I, he instilled a work ethic in me and competitiveness that, you know, hate to lose attitude. And I think that it's just, that has made me successful at the, you know, playing in college and then, uh, going into my coaching career too, you know, I just at finding ways to adapt to because you're just so competitive and you want to win, you know. And, and I think, you know, once I got to be able to coach under him, I saw that, you know, he was he he was 
one of the hardest workers I've ever been around watching the way he, he put time, uh, effort into, you know, whether he had a really good team or a not so good team, you know, he never changed. It was always the same. He always stayed the course. He always found ways to help the players on his team be successful while holding them to a high standard. What did he have to say to you when you got selected for the job? And then did he give you any words of advice? You know, there wasn't too much words of advice. Um, he was just extremely happy for me to get this opportunity. And, um, you know, as seeing my dad, you know, tell me he's proud of me and, uh, he said he's, he's excited for me and he knows I'm going to do a great job. I mean, that, that's just that's just something that was extremely special. Well, talk a little bit about um, your philosophy, and we'll talk about your influence about, about um, where you're wanting to head with the cash program. But who influences you the most? And, and usually uh, coaches borrow from everywhere. I mean, either in the state, uh, sometimes at the collegiate level. Um, where do you gravitate? offensively and defensively, your mindset, how have you attached that to anything that you saw that you like? You know, just growing up through different coaches, you know, I started under Hall of Fame coach Woody Roof. And, you know, a lot of times um, you see older coaches who do what they've always done. They don't change. They, they're going to do the same thing the same way because that's the way it's always been done. But, co you know, Coach Roof came in even at an older age and he adapted and he said, you know, you got to do what's best for your team. You know, it doesn't matter if, if you've always done it this way. If, if you have certain players that that doesn't fit, you got to adapt to their to their skills. And that's something that's always stuck with me. And then, you know, I got the, I got the privilege of being under Coach Griffin for seven years as a defense coordinator. And I think his greatest um, skill and leadership aspect that he brought was he loved and served his players uh, immensely. You know, and he, he, he went above and beyond for kids to show them, you know, not so much the football aspect of it, but the, hey, I mean, the, we're, we're going to try to develop your character. We're going to try to show – we're going to show you we love you. We're going to show you that we're, we care about you as people more than football players a lot of times. So so on a Friday night, what do we expect to see? Because uh, it's a new look. What is the Cash Bulldogs going to look like on both sides of the ball? Well, we're going to be extremely creative on offense. Um, I think we're going to try to do things that are going to give us advantage, you know, when we may be outmatched in size up front. And uh, uh, we're going to be able to take what the defense gives us and, um, you know, just be extremely detailed in the small things. Do you think that's going to help? I, I know Brett Venables the same way. Defensive coordinator comes head coach. Uh, you have a different mindset. You know, offensive guys, uh, you know, I, I've been around it enough to know the different philosophies. Help you a little bit uh, being more defensive-minded because of those seven years to put yourself in the head coaching position? You know, I do. And uh, um, becoming the head coach, you know, one thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to hire an offense coordinator and defense coordinator. And that way I wasn't solely focused on one side of the ball and, you know, I've been working with our offense coordinator, Landon Abbott, and, you know, I just – I think the factor I bring in is, like, when we start going over things and installing our offense and what we want to do, I just I, – I see things as the defense side of the ball, and I'm like, man, that just puts defenses in such a bind. We yeah. need to do this, this, and this, you know. Yeah. And it's just I, – I think growing as a coach, you know, learning uh, specifically the defensive side of the ball and really growing in that area for seven years and then uh, – kind of getting my hand back in the offensive side. It's just, I think it's made me a better offensive coach because now I see, I know the way defense is thanks, the, the, the things that put defenses in binds and uh, being able to help relay that to him and, um, and kind of guide where he wants to go and then let him take the reins. Say that, uh, you know, defense wins championships. And, and I, I take it that since you were doing the defense the last seven years, there's probably not going to be much change in that area, you know, just maybe offensively uh, that we'll see for the Bulldogs this year. Um, let's kind of talk a little bit about district. Um, I know the coaches that I've talked with, I know that you guys really had to um, get inventive because of the change that OSSAA had to go through. Uh, the schedules were kind of pretty much cemented in, in your mind. And then all of a sudden that gets thrown out the window, including uh, the one with your rival with the Elgin Owls. Um, you, you were still kept them as a non-district game because of the, uh, the battle of the Wichita's, uh, there was so much, uh, fan base entrenched in it. It's kind of like, uh, OU Texas, you know, you want that to go on. 
And uh, now they're back into 4A, and it will actually be the last game of the season. But outside of Elgin coming back to 4A, which is not unfamiliar to Cash. I mean, you, you know, you played them every year, including last year. Um, you still have Weatherford. You still have uh, Clinton. You've got, uh, you know, you got teams like Elk City that has really come on. Uh, I would say, and I think Coach Griffin had mentioned that too, uh, that's a tough district right there. And yeah, on the other side isn't isn't any better with, you know, the Blanchards and the Tuttles and now Newcastle's move up to 5A. But how does that structure and, and the district fall? And, and what do you look to get out of that for this year? Yeah, you know, 4A1's always been known for being extremely tough with the district, uh, with, you know, Staples and like uh, Clinton and Weatherford and Elk City. You know, and then you add... Elgin coming back to 4A, who, you know, had extreme success at the 5A level, and Coach Sean White has done an amazing job with, you know, building that program up. It just makes it even harder, you know, but uh, at the end of the day, we're not going to back down from a challenge. We're going to, it just makes us have to, you know, prepare for each district game, like, you know, it's a playoff game, and understand that each one is going to be tough, and we're going to have to find a way to get the job done. And then, you know, since you've been around these kids, it's not like get to know, okay, you know, you just kind of have to, uh, how did they adapt to you in that change? And then how is it coming together as far as your meetings and, and, and who's going where position wise, how has that looked? I think it's been a smooth transition. You know, uh, we gave, you know, coach Griffin's always done this and, you know, I like the idea because, you know, kids are so busy in the month of June with basketball team camps and playing summer baseball. So we've, we've always been, uh, uh, able to give them the month of June off. So I feel like it truly helped me, you know, uh, getting our staff together and, um, you know, really getting things organized and uh, being able to present that to our team when uh, Summer Pride got here and uh, being able to kind of start slowly uh, mentally installing our offense and defense and things like that. I, I think that transition uh, helped because we gave them the month of June off and you know, when we got to Summer Pride, we hit the ground running. And um, uh, we've had uh, – we kind of had a team meeting early on when we were doing 7-on-7 seven seven in June, and I just told them our vision. You know, I, I was straightforward with them. I said, you know, I love what Coach Griffin did, and we're going to keep some of the stuff, but we're going to change some stuff because that's just kind of things that uh, my vision uh, and what I want to do with it. And so uh, I presented that to them, and they've been – all in on, on it and been excited about it. And it's, it's, it's been awesome to watch. Now I know most uh, know the Thompson name, most know Tanner Thompson, but if they don't new to the cash area, new to the cash bulldog family, what most do you want them to know about you and about this program? Uh, you know, for us, it's being a part of something greater than yourself. You know, um, our, our motto this year is going to be believe and we're going to put instead of an I, we're going to have a one in there. And, um, our reasoning for that is we're going to be one team, one family, and one purpose. And our purpose is to love and serve each other. And I feel like if we're all in on that, if we're, if we're all in on loving and serving our teammates, if we're all in on lo- loving and serving our school, if we're all in on loving and serving our communities, and as coaches, we're all in on loving and serving our players, we're going to be a part of something greater than ourselves. And, that, and you're going to be able to see that when we play on Friday nights. Well, the buy-in to family has always been good. I know that uh, Altus, when they won their state championship in 2015, uh, they had family on the back of their jersey and no one had no name. Just in, and so that that unified stuff and it really does make a difference. I do know, and I you know I don't know when it started, but you know, Coach Griffin, uh, I always was amazed. I'd come out here and do my featured stuff with you, and you guys get in a circle. Uh, you have a name for it. What did you call that when they all? Yeah, we called it Pack Time. Yeah, pack time. Is that going to still continue? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's that's one thing. Again, I, I can't compliment Coach Griffin enough on the way he he tried to instill life skills in kids and, and uh, build character and kind of show them uh, different viewpoints on um, certain topics by letting coaches talk or players talk. And it, it, was, it was extremely powerful, and that's something we plan on keeping. Well, that's good. I mean, and if you're not familiar, they just gather around a big circle, they hold hands, and uh, there's a speaker that comes in the middle and 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 gives some heart to heart talks uh, to the guys. And, and I I really really appreciate that. That is really unique and and something uh, really nice. Okay, so ready or not, here we come. Um, w- I don't know your schedule of scrimmages, so um, take me through what you've got to prepare yourself before the season starts, where you're going, and what you look to get out of it. 
Yeah, well, I mean, we we got a tough schedule. Um, we're we're gonna start. We're gonna open up with our red and white scrimmage on August seventeenth, and then we got two two scrimmages and um, uh, one at home against Lone Grove, and then we'll go to Plainview in a multi multi team scrimmage, and then we open up at home with Duncan uh, for the first game. So um, it, it's gonna be a long road this year, and I I I believe we have the kids that can go be successful. Um, you know, and then that, that, that's our biggest thing with our kids. You know, we, we talked about our purpose to love and serve each other, but we also want to believe. Uh, you know, I've heard from a great coach that you're, you're first a champion in your mind before you're a champion anywhere else. So we're, we're going to be all in on Cash Bulldogs, and we're going to be all in on the people who we have on this team, and we're going to go, we're gonna go compete to a high level. Well, you got a good start with it. I know that uh, you can always peer back and uh... – and get some knowledge from your dad, maybe peek around, uh, you know, to get some of that too. And that's always a nice, a nice nucleus to have around you supporting cast. You know, that's a good head coach. will tell you it's uh, he's only as good as his coordinators. And like you said, you went out to get an offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator. I really compliment you on that. Sometimes guys want to do a little bit of both, you know, and you can't really succeed at that one if you're going to have your hand in this. So hats off to you at an early age to, to know that that's not where you want to be. I say, let's let someone handle that and then I can just kind of manage that so uh, I think you're heading off in, in a very good direction right direction uh, love that cash is part of the network on the Oklahoma Sports Network to watch every uh, football game home and away for the cash Bulldogs and we're excited uh, to start your new year under your new helm thank you I appreciate that all right, and we're going to get some, I told you this ahead of time, but we're going to get Tanner on as well as a feature for the Cash Bulldogs when it gets uh, close to uh, the season kicking off, which is right around the corner. I'm, you know, we talk about football season is almost here. I think uh, the Big 12 and the SEC were uh, with little promos. They say well, we're only like 40 some odd days away. And I said, wow, I said the countdown. I always said after the 4th of July, uh, summer for me is over because, uh, you know, the next week you're talking about mid to late July and the kids start back up usually the second week of August. Uh, back in the day, my day, it was after Labor Day, so it was September. So you kind of had August to still prepare for, but uh, it, it's all here in a, in a fast, furious mode. And as we started the program, I want to end with it. Make sure you download our apps on Apple and Android devices. It's the best and fastest way you can connect to all of our games at one time. The Oklahoma Sports Network, it's free to download and free to watch. Uh, we also have OSN One when we have some content from schools that uh, are not in the network. We're still trying to build a network. So if you know of anybody interested to have your uh, school or event uh, uh, positioned on the Oklahoma Sports Network, we'd like to hear from you. Roku, Amazon, Fire, Apple TV, and all the social media platforms as well. So that is uh, episode number seven, and I'm continuing uh, to stay with my concept of uh, making sure that we have a weekly, a weekly podcast here uh, from the Cameron Studios, uh, Cetus Podcast Studios, and we appreciate Cameron University as well. We'll see you next time around. You've been watching and listening to a presentation of the Oklahoma Sports. <laughs>